Krishnan, some results still to come in, of course, but uh, sometimes you do just need to take a step back. And if you look at this result objectively, then it's an astonishing outcome for the SNP. After 14 years in government, they have won more than 80% of the constituencies in Scotland. And yes, it looks like the, the Tories will hang on to seats uh, on the regional list, but they'll be way back in second. And if you add in the Greens, look, set for their best ever result in Scotland, then we are heading for a supercharged independence majority. And it makes for a striking comparison, doesn't it? Because if England is having a love-in with Boris Johnson, then for many in Scotland, it may feel like they're locked in with Boris Johnson. After years of deadlock on independence is change in the air. Not just in the town of Ayr, which ditched the Tories for the SNP after 21 years. Can I ask who you voted for? SNP. Yeah. SNP. But in the path Scotland has chosen in this election, it looks like more support for pro-independence parties and way more pressure on Westminster to grant a referendum. What's the main reason in your mind that you wanted to vote SNP? Um, probably independence. No matter what we vote for up here, we never get what we want because Westminster rules, OK? Um, so we have to get independence for okay. Scotland. Boris Johnson has already said no to an independence referendum today before all the votes in Scotland had even been counted. And all the signs are that Nicola Sturgeon this time will not take no for an answer. She's talking about fighting this in the Supreme Court. We're heading for a potentially tense new period between Holyrood and Westminster. I hereby declare that Finlay Carson has been duly elected. Yes, the SNP case would be overwhelming with an outright majority, but their top target seats today stayed Tory. Eyes then on the regional vote, the system that compensates parties who don't pick up many constituency seats. How many more seats could the SNP claim? Kind of on a knife edge. So here, Either way, with the Greens, there will be a pro-independence majority. Two parties with a clear manifesto commitment to a referendum. If the UK government digs their heels in and just tells the people of Scotland, no, you can't, more and more people who've maybe been undecided, maybe been in the middle of the independence debate, will be pushed towards supporting independence. Labour tried to rise above the independence debate. Instead, it may have drowned them out again. The Tories embraced the referendum fight, but did they play into SMP hands? As for Alex Salmond's new party, having talked up a super majority, he was set to end up with a super bad zero seats. So Nicola Sturgeon will lead an independence majority in Holyrood. The question is not going away, even if Boris Johnson, for now, insists the answer is still no. Well, with me now is SNP MP Hannah Bardell, Labour MSP Daniel Johnson, and from Moffat, the Conservative MSP Oliver Mundell. Hannah Bardell, do you accept that just as Boris Johnson has ridden a vaccination wave in England, a lot of people have voted SNP because they like Nicola Sturgeon's running of the country during the Covid crisis, not because they want another referendum? I think there's a whole lot of reasons that people have voted for the SNP, but it's interesting to hear Gary saying that Boris Johnson's going to try and pick apart our mandate before uh, all the votes have been counted. Um, it's got a bit of a cheek. It's not even had the uh, you know, decency or uh, the, the time to come and show his face here in Scotland. I think people have voted for the SNP for a whole lot of reasons, including the fact that Nicola Sturgeon has been an excellent leader, but because... 17, 18, 19 polls uh, have shown consistently there is a majority of people in Scotland who want independence. Daniel Johnson, I mean, if there are some people who voted for the SNP who could, be, who could vote no in a referendum, there are 40% of your Labour supporters who want a referendum, aren't there? Are you now going to accept that this should happen? Well, I've just been elected uh, and with a very clear s signal from my constituents that they don't want more division. And, you know, we don't even have the full results. And already we, we've got the beginnings of a Mexican standoff between the First Minister and the Prime Minister. This is not what Scots want. The pandemic and recovery demand that we come together, but already we see divisive politics but they don't again. And I think you. it's just very depressing. I mean, you've it. lost seats, haven't you? I mean, well, if this was the great Labour recovery in yet. Scotland, it was the dog that didn't bark. 
Well, look, we started this campaign on 14% in vote, and in 10 weeks, Anas Sarwar has turned that around. So the result is, is maybe not the one that we wanted, but I think it's a, a, a really credit uh, to the, the, the campaign that he's run. So you and do the not positive accept message... the, the, sort of the, the democratic result of SNP and Green overwhelming majority in the parliament for a another referendum. Well, we don't even have you, you, you all, all the results in. I mean, what I believe in is in parliamentary democracy. Mandates are about what you can deliver in parliament. We've not even sworn in a single MSP, and yet people are trying to claim that there's a sort of a, you know, thresholds and mandates have been met. We don't know yet. Let's take this one step at a time. We are in, you know, the most unprecedented circumstances, and we need to act with cool heads. Hannah Bardell, this is what's coming, isn't it? Well, I mean, there doesn't need to be a Mexican standoff. All Boris Johnson and the government at Westminster need to do is accept democracy, accept that the SNP has won 85% of the vote, 80% of the seats, the constituency seats. Um, if you extrapolated that, if we had 129 constituencies in the Scottish Parliament and it was a first-past-the-post system because the Westminster parliamentarians want to judge us by their system, we would have 109 seats in the Scottish Parliament and we'd have 550-odd seats at Westminster. So if they want to judge us by their system, they've got to accept the fact that the SNP has won this election. We might not have won a majority, but there will be a majority of MSPs in the Scottish Parliament, as you said in the beginning, more than there have ever been, that want and have stood on a mandate in their manifesto to give the people of Scotland a right to decide their okay. own future. Um, Oliver Mundell, um, we can already hear the, the sort of the refusal of a referendum coming from Westminster and from your party in government there. I mean, if, if it would be wrong to hold a referendum in Scotland during the recovery period of, um, of COVID, would it also be wrong to hold a general election? Because there's rumours that your Prime Minister wants to do that. I think uh, deciding who runs the country is a different question uh, from, from having a referendum. We had one in 2014. We had a very comprehensive debate. We were told it was once in a generation, once in a lifetime. It's quite a disruptive event. It was quite unpleasant for a lot of people. It causes a lot of division and uncertainty. A general election is about who uh, takes the decisions. And as we've seen with the Scottish Parliament election, it is possible to, to, to hold that type of election um, during COVID. Right, but how, how long do you think you need to wait before a referendum is possible? I mean, it's, it's not never, is it? When well, you've got this think... kind of vote in the Scottish Parliament. Well, I don't see this vote as being dramatically different from what we had. It seems like a status quo uh, vote. Uh, there hasn't been this major breakthrough. Well, which is an independence uh, majority. There was an independence majority in the last parliament. That, that is the status uh, but quo. An, but there isn't an independence majority in the country. Um, and what uh, we used to hear from the SNP was that they would convince the majority of Scots Thank to back independence Oliver. before they would hold uh, a referendum. Uh, and now they realise it's too difficult to do that. They've just started agitating um, and, and stirring up uh, the same old uh, arguments of the past. I think people in Scotland voted and they took the First Minister on her word uh, when she said that this uh, Scottish Parliament election was about who uh, leads Scotland through the recovery. Uh, and now the minute the votes uh, have been cast and, and we, we, we see the votes counted, uh, they're straight back on to, to this obsession at a time uh, when politicians in all parties should be working together to protect yeah. jobs. Uh, to but we've had that argument and people have decided and, and they've elected another SNP, uh, you know, uh, government and lots of green MSPs as well. So I mean, um, how, you know, how, how long are you going to... Pretty much to the... Keep, the same result you know, pretty much just again. saying no. Well, the people of Scotland have said no. They said no in uh, 2014. Uh, and they've said no in this election with what looks like, uh, you know, a, a pretty much 50-50 uh, split. There hasn't been a, a huge surge in support of the SNP. Um, if people in Scotland were uh, passionately in favour of independence, if they felt this was really the time for a step change, we'd have seen a boost in SNP support. Okay. And I contrast their performance here in Scotland uh, to that of Labour in Wales, uh, who seem to uh, you know, have seen an uptick uh, off the back of the... Uh, you know, performance, uh, you're an incumbency during the pandemic. Yeah. Seen the Conservative and Boris well Johnson in England. In England. And, we've and we've done all of that. Hannah Bardell, I mean, what, what are you going to do when they just keep saying no? Are you, you know, is there no question of what they regard as an illegal referendum? I mean, you know, is, is there a point at which 
there's a referendum that they say is illegal and you say, no, it's, it's legal because it's been passed by that parliament? Well, I mean, Nicola has been very clear and has said, you know, if it comes to it, the, the, then, then we would see Boris Johnson in court. But I, I suspect, you know, he, 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 he bluffs a lot and I suspect that behind the scenes there will be many advisers if they are sensible and if they ever he's want to have a chance. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, but you know, Oliver Mundell's sitting there saying uh, that there not has been a, uh, there has not been a surge for the SNP. Well, this uh, we, you know greatest greatest number of votes cast for any party yeah. since devolution. Okay. He Thank continuing you. to deny democracy Just is not going to do Daniel, them any favours. Will you be shoulder to shoulder with the Tories? Ten thousand people have lost their lives in the virus, and yet the SNP are talking choosing to talk about taking the UK government to court. What people want is to concentrate on recovering public services, recovering communities and recovering jobs, because that's it's what, what recovery doing. means, not, not taking governments to court. Daniel Johnson, uh, Oliver Mundell in Moffat and Hannah Bardell, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.